Hello, this is Paul Check. Welcome back to my video blog. Today I thought I would talk about reflecting on 2018 since the new year is fast approaching, if you can believe it. I don't know about you, but 2018 went by very, very fast for me. Lots of exciting things and progress and uh, lots to celebrate. So I thought I'd share some of the concepts I use and teach for going into reflection on what's occurred in your life, how things unfolded, whether you met your goals for 2018, what kinds of challenges occurred, and what kinds of changes you might feel are necessary to make as you get ready to plan for 2019. If you do that, I encourage it. Once you have a plan, you use your mind to put your awareness on what you want and to the degree that you charge that plan with your emotion and visualize it as happening you create a magnetic attraction i know some people think these are airy fairy concepts but a lot of those people don't use those concepts and like a lot of things they just have opinions without any real authentic experience or commitment or practice so this is for those of you that want to use your mind and the amazing powers of your mind to test the laws of quantum physics and probability. So some of the concepts that I'll share with you, very simple. To begin with, what worked well for you in 2018? Acknowledge those things, take account of them. It, you can look at that, what worked well for creating happiness in your life, what worked well for your exercise program, what worked well for your diet, and what worked well for giving you amount, uh, the adequate amount of rest you need to be vital and to have time for some unbound play, play without any uh, attached outcome. Then to do your review effectively, it's good to identify what your dream is for 2019 because as the old saying goes, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. It's very hard to review what worked well and what didn't work well with respect to what you want to do the next year if you don't have a decent or clear, ideally a clear idea of what your dream is for 2019 or the next year. So it might be worth doing some meditation and say, well, you know, even if you don't have a dream, like an overarching dream, what might be your goal or objective, even if you just looked at it from the point of happy making, diet, quiet, and movement, you could say my goal or objective for each of those four doctors in 2019 is, and then when you look at those together, you might be able to encapsulate those in a statement of positive affirmation in 2019 i choose to and then state it that way then what changes are necessary to live your dream so we can look at this simple model here and you see in the green circle what are the things that you liked to do or like to do and did in, and enjoyed in 2018 and maybe want to do more of or at least as much of in 2019 what are the things that you know in order to live the next year more fully more abundantly or more balanced that you have to do it might be spend less money pay off some bills it could be clean your house it could be get your car repaired uh, it could be make changes in the business. It could be any number of things for each individual. These are the things that often we know that we have to do, but we avoid doing, which is usually a sign that we're too tired to fully engage our lives, or we're stuck in repeated behaviors that aren't serving us, which lends itself to my concept of an addiction, any repeated, repeated behavior that's not serving you. So, this area here is often where what I call the nightmare is, and that's where most of our energy is being trapped. That's stopping us from having the energy to do the things that create more joy in our lives. So when you look at the things you like to do and the things that you have to do based on what your dream is and 
the changes you want to make, you can write a list of the things that you're willing and able to do right now, or you could even schedule that list. In January, I'm going to do A, B, C, February, March, etc. As long as you're clear about what you're willing and able to do. Oftentimes, we end up with a list of things that we have to do that's so long it can paralyze us. And when I'm writing healing programs for people or exercise programs for people, I found that if I organize the program so that the most important thing to do first is say, let's say, getting to bed on time, drink more water, eat higher quality food, get at least half an hour of movement in a day, I organize those things so that if a person only has time to do one thing and they start at the top of the list, they're going to be doing the one thing that's going to give them the most return on their time and energy investment. So when you're doing your willing to do items, you can put that in the order that in some cases it may not be the most important thing to do. But if you're honest with yourself and you say, well, even though I know what I should be doing now, I'm just not going to do it. That's being honest with yourself. Then choose something that you are willing and able to do. Because once you get some movement in the change process, it usually starts to gain momentum and you start feeling better. Sometimes doing something as simple as cleaning your house can change the life force energy or the chi in the environment and pick you up a little bit and inspire you to keep going. One of the things that I think is also very helpful is as you're going through this process and looking at your 2018 in reflection, put a list together of the things that you must have moving into 2019 for your ideal uh, way of living, what your dream is, and put a list of things that you must not have. So maybe you, you suffered an illness from working too much and so you might have to put on the must not have, I must not have more time spent at work than X number of hours a week, or I must not have um, a continuation of challenging relationships with certain people that drain you, or I must not have uh, more credit card bills than I can effectively manage and not be stressed about it. Those are the types of things that might go on the must not have list. So if you do this, what worked well, celebrate that, decide how much more of that you want to do, or if there's activities that worked well, but you're ready to change those to some new ones or any one of them. What is your dream for 2019 stated affirmatively? affirmatively I choose to dot, 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 and then look at the changes necessary to live your new dream in your review i like to do so you know where you can start if you're tired i have to do because if i don't do those things i'm going to have groundhog day and then prioritize your list of i'm willing and able to do now next week next month next quarter etc clearly define what you must have and clearly define what you must not have whether it be personal relationships, relationships to places or to things or activities or tasks. Uh, it could be personal, it could be professional, it could be spiritually oriented. So that small process can really help bring some clarity, help you organize your energy, uh, help you organize the flow of your life so that when you reach the special day, January 1st, you have a really good sense of what's important for you, what you're no longer willing to put energy into, and then you start with the things that you're willing and able to do, and as you gain momentum and feel better, you become more inspired to keep knocking items off that list of changes that you want to make, and then hopefully soon you wake up feeling in flow and centered in yourself and when we work at these three things honestly typically we have a sense of joy if we only do the things we think we have to do and none of the things we like to do then things typically go flat you don't enjoy yourself you might get grumpy and hard to be around but if we do the things we're willing and able to do and we're honest 
also about why we're not able to do certain things that we've needed to do, which often is I'm too tired or I don't have money or I don't have the support I need or the resources I need, then by bringing that up into our awareness and putting it on our list in the right place, we can move forward. So hopefully you'll enjoy that simple and effective practice. I look forward to sharing more with you soon. Thanks for joining me today.